Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name's Ariella. I'm a first year medical student and I make videos about medical school and lifestyle and education. So if you're interested in any of that, just keep on watching. Today, I wanted to talk a little bit about my tips for surviving anatomy lab in medical school. So I've been in the anatomy lab for three weeks now and I have a pretty good handle on how everything works. And so I just wanted to share with you my tips and tricks on how to survive because I was pretty nervous going into it. Um, it's definitely not as bad as you think it's going to be, but I have some recommendations to make things a little bit easier. I sat down because I was kneeling before and that was uncomfortable. <laughs> so yeah, let's get started. So the first thing that I would recommend doing is if your school offers something like this, I would go to the night before anatomy lab experience. Sometimes schools will have meetings the night before the anatomy lab, as the name suggests, where you can go and get comfortable with the cadavers and look at them and be in the cadaver lab and then write a reflection on the experience that you've had. I would have gone to mine, but I had committed to another activity that evening, so I wasn't able to go, but I really wish I could have because it seemed like a cool experience and a good way to get comfortable with the cadavers before you begin your dissections. So if your school offers something like that, I would definitely go. Even if you're not sure how you feel, it's just a good way to get an idea of what you're going to be doing. The next thing I recommend doing is watching a video of the dissection that you know you're scheduled for either two days before or the night before you go in to do that dissection. And some schools will have official videos that they provide in order to show you the exact dissection that you're doing. My school doesn't do that, so what I do is I just search dissection of the back muscles on YouTube and find whatever video I can, and that way I'm prepared a, for what I'm going to be doing as closely as I possibly can because sometimes people do dissections differently and I have to do mine based on the manual that the school gives us, but I have a general idea of what I'm going to be doing. And then second is so that I can get comfortable with what I'm doing because I knew for the first one that I was probably going to be a little bit uncomfortable cutting out the muscles of the back because I had never experienced anything like this before. So I watched it a couple times in order to prepare myself for what it was going to be like. Kind of along the same lines, I would also recommend quizzing yourself on the structures that you're going to be dissecting the night before lab if you have time. It's really, really hard to learn structures without actually seeing them in the anatomy lab, but I find that when I'm prepared and I know exactly what the structures are and what the innervations are and how the muscles work, at least memorized from flashcards in my brain, I perform a lot better during the dissections and I am a lot more comfortable working with them. So that's another thing that I would recommend you do the night before your dissection or at least some time leading up to your dissection. So here's some more of the more stereotypical tips. I do keep a jar of Vicks Vapor Rub in my locker that I put like right under my mouth here and like onto my nose. That usually only lasts for about an hour, but it's not a big deal if you need to take your gloves off, run out and go ahead and apply more. I don't really need to because the formaldehyde doesn't bother me that much, but I do put it on once in the morning just so that I have like something to distract me a little bit. Um, the formaldehyde isn't too bad, but if you're really sensitive to it, Vicks Vapor Rub is a really, really good option because it smells like menthol and menthol is very strong. So it kind of like wakes you up and keeps you distracted, which is nice. So a lot of people think going into the anatomy lab for the first time that they're gonna faint. And that's definitely what I thought because I'm a little bit prone to fainting. I have a naturally low blood pressure. So when I'm in a stressful situation, that blood pressure drops and then I pass out, <laughs> which is great. Um, so in order to combat this, I always wear compression socks to lab. I've forgotten a couple times and it hasn't really been that bad, but I wear compression socks so that the blood doesn't pool in my, my lower legs. It, you know, the circulation stays up and it keeps going to my brain so I don't pass out. And another thing that's really good about compression socks is when you're on your feet for a long time, that blood is gonna pool in your legs anyway. So I wear them whenever I'm gonna be on my feet for a significant portion of time to improve my circulation in general. And that's really good if you're standing because you're a scribe or an MA or a nurse, or if you're gonna be in the anatomy lab for three hours and your feet are gonna be tired. So that's another thing that I recommend if you don't already have compression socks, I would invest in a good pair of them. And one thing to note about compression socks is that you shouldn't put them in the dryer because I think really, really hot heat can mess with the fibers that confer the, uh, 
the strength of the compression sock. So if you have really expensive ones and you don't want to ruin them, avoid the dryer. This is another thing that you typically hear of students who go in the anatomy lab. Some people do this, some people don't. So what I'm doing is I have a pair of scrubs that I bought on Amazon. They were really cheap and I'm going to wear them for the entire year and then when I'm done, I'm gonna throw them away. So <laughs> that's because I think the formaldehyde just never really comes out once you wash it. It kind of gets caked in and at the end you just kind of want to get rid of it and not have to think about it. So that's what I'm doing. I also have a lab coat that's required by our lab that I'm going to throw away at the end and a cheap pair of sneakers that I got on Amazon that a lot of people throw away their shoes at the end as well because things get on the floor and it's not fun. So. All of those clothing items that I wear into lab, I made sure that I picked things that were going to be disposable. So if you don't have a pair of shoes that you're willing to sacrifice, you might want to try and find something cheaper because when it comes to the end of your anatomy lab, you honestly might not want to keep them anymore, even if you thought you did want to keep them in the beginning. So keep that in mind. Another thing you could do if you wanted to salvage some of those is you could keep a couple like plastic bags in your locker and then bring everything home in a plastic bag at the end of every week or the end of every two weeks and wash it when you get home and that might preserve them a little more than if you just wear them every day without washing them. I don't know. It's kind of gross but that's kind of what everybody does. Another thing that's really fun is my school has big donation bins, so at the end of the year, if they wanna give the shoes away, you can just throw them in the donation bin, so it's kind of like throwing them away, you don't have to deal with them anymore, but they'll clean them up and donate them to people who need them, so that's really nice. Another thing that I wanna mention that seems counterintuitive is you wanna eat a really good big breakfast the morning of, and you also wanna drink a lot of water. So a lot of people will avoid having breakfast because they're worried that they're gonna feel queasy or gross, but being hypoglycemic and being dehydrated can actually make things a lot harder. Like I said before, I have a low blood pressure and a lot of people do, so if you are dehydrated that lowers your blood pressure even further because there's not enough volume so your blood can't get up to your brain and you might feel woozy so having a good breakfast being well hydrated will actually help combat those things even though thinking about food is probably the last thing that you want to do on your first day of anatomy lab but I promise it definitely gets better speaking of food bring a granola bar or a snack or something like I said, it's, food's probably the last thing that you're gonna be thinking about on your first day, but you'll adjust really, really quickly. It's, it's kind of surprising how quickly you adjust. And formaldehyde, even though it smells nasty, is an appetite stimulant, so it makes you hungry. And I find whenever I'm in lab at about the one hour out of three or four hour mark, I'm starving. <laughs> I want a granola bar or something to eat so badly. So I keep it in my locker so that way I have something to eat if I get hungry in the middle. And that, yeah, it sounds funny, but formaldehyde makes you hungry. So definitely bring a snack. The next thing that I recommend is throwing yourself into whatever work you're gonna do. So come to lab prepared. You may have watched random videos on YouTube. You may have watched YouTube videos that were published by your school. You read the dissection manual. You've studied the material. And when you get to anatomy lab, you'll be equipped to jump in and participate and really get your, like, start working and I find that when I'm engaged and I'm like doing things I feel a lot less queasy about what's going on so I felt weirder when I was standing and watching and thinking about it and we had a 30 minute introduction to the anatomy lab on the first day and that's when I felt the most uncomfortable once they uncovered the body and we started doing our dissection because I was using my hands I felt a lot more comfortable it's kind of a weird situation because you think that when you're participating that's when you're going to be the most uncomfortable but I actually found just sitting in the room doing nothing was when I felt the worst. The last thing that I want to talk about really quickly is just to remind yourself that everything that you're doing here in anatomy lab is going to help you save more lives in the future so it may seem uncomfortable at first but the people who have donated their bodies to science are doing an incredible thing and we have an incredible learning experience as medical students. It's 
genuinely one of the coolest and most interesting things I've ever done and I was really really scared of it in the beginning so much so that when my curriculum got twisted around and we were doing uh, like didactic work instead of anatomy first term I was so relieved because I had no idea how I was gonna deal with the situation but now that I'm here I'm actually learning so much and it's so interesting and so I would encourage you to take this opportunity if you have it to appreciate what you've been given and this learning experience and it's just it's really amazing it may not seem like it, but I promise you're going to adjust. You're gonna to wanna to eat in lab, which is, sounds really gross, but you know, you'll be tempted to do it, don't. It'll be over in the blink of an eye, so definitely try to enjoy the time that you have in lab when you can, and don't forget to study outside of lab as well, because I find that after lab, I'm extremely, extremely exhausted from just standing for three hours and doing a lot of physical work when we need to do physical work for the anatomy lab, so. Definitely enjoy it and take time to relax, but also don't forget to study other things as well. All right, so those are my tips for surviving anatomy lab. If you guys have other tips that you wanna to recommend to people, make sure you comment those down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say because I've only been in lab for three weeks and maybe I feel like I have a handle on this information, but there are things I could definitely be doing better. Um, so if you have any recommendations, put those down below. If you have any video ideas that you would like to see, I'd also love to see those below. Anatomy has been really busy so far, but I'm gonna try my best. And yeah, so that's everything I have to say. I hope you all had a wonderful holiday and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.